Today I'll be illustrating orchestrations, uh, what they are, what they do, and why they're important. So Functionize is a cloud testing platform. Uh, while the infrastructure is hosted with Functionize and the tests that you create are completely scalable uh, at execution time. Uh, the way that the technology works is if you execute a test, we call Google, spin up a virtual machine, test executes, virtual machine spins down, test results go back into the UI. And we can do that for one test, 10 tests, 100 tests. There's not really too much of a limitation there. And what happens is you kind of want to structure how you might be running some or all of your test cases based on you know, various uh, uh, requirements that you have. And so here we have a, a project, it's a Salesforce project. I have uh, about 10 or 11 test cases in here. And what I want to do is set this up to you know, either run on a schedule or be kicked off by uh, an integration. Maybe I'm calling it from a CI CD provider, something like that. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is come into orchestrations and I'm going to click create new orchestration. And I'll select my Salesforce project. And as you can kind of see here, you can select uh, multiple projects. And even within those projects, you can select different environments. If you have folders or tags to kind of categorize and organize your test cases in different ways, like maybe I have a regression or smoke tag or uh, you know different folders that contain sets of test cases that I want for this particular uh, set of tests that I'll be executing through an orchestration. Here, I've selected the Salesforce project. Within that project are about 10 test cases. I'm going to pull all of those into this orchestration. I'll schedule this on demand. Um, and for this particular project, I only have Chrome and, and a mobile device enabled. So I'm just going to pick Chrome here. Now, at the bottom, what you'll see is foreground, background, and TDM run. Foreground means that if you execute this orchestration, you'll actually see the test cases executing in the project that they belong in. And this is a, this is a nice method to, to execute tests, but if you use background, kind of a virtual copy of those test cases will be created. It'll be run in the background, and this will allow you to actually edit the existing test cases within the project as the orchestration is actually running. Uh, TDM, uh, test data management run, uh, or kind of data-driven testing, is something that's outside of the scope of this particular video, but will be covered in another. Integrations are listed uh, on this page, and there are other integrations available on the Team tab for uh, admins uh, of accounts. And you won't see the Team tab unless you're an admin, but this might be where you facilitate an integration into you know, uh, you know, Jenkins or, or something like that, depending on how you want to facilitate, obviously you can do it here as well. Now, on the advanced tab, there's really two settings that I like to make folks aware of. One is that uh, tests can be run in sequence and in different groups. And I typically suggest uh, that both of these are selected, even if you're running everything in parallel in a single group. Um, <clears throat> just because it's it'll be a little bit easier to adjust later and so basically what we're going to do here is select sequential group i don't want to rerun incomplete tests because if they return incomplete they're probably going to do the same thing again and i don't want to rerun failed tests because i don't want to cover up a bug that only happens uh, you know every once in a while i'm going to uncheck halt after failure because in this hypothetical example even if one test case fails, it doesn't have any dependencies on later test cases that are running in sequential order. So I want to continue to run my whole suite, even if one test case fails. If you have halt after failure checked, if a single test case fails, the rest of the orchestration will stop running. So typically used only if you're passing variables around from test to test and you have multiple dependencies on, on test cases. Um, email alerts, that's fairly uh, self-explanatory. Now, let's say that uh, 
my tests run on salesforce.com, but I want to run in a different environment. And I don't want to copy the test cases and work like that. So what I would do is I would have my salesforce.com. That's the URL that they're currently on. But I actually want to run on dev.salesforce. This will actually swap out that URL for this one and run it on a different environment. Or I could do staging and so on. And you can do multiple here, I believe, with just a space in between. So if there's multiple URLs that you need to swap out, that is also supported. Um, alerts, uh, typically you're just going to send those on failure only. Uh, in some cases, actually, you might use all runs, depending on the use case. And we'll skip these two settings for now. So let's go ahead and add new. These are indeed the test cases that I want to add. All 11 are here. And I don't need to unselect anything here. So I'll go ahead and hit Submit. And this is where the sequential and grouping setting really kind of comes into play. So I'll go ahead and add a second group here. And I have a set of tests that need to run in parallel. And then what I'll say is that we have two test cases that are passing a variable from one, one another. So let's kind of pretend that after this test case execute, it, it creates a, a test data artifact that needs to be leveraged in this test case in a sequential order. So you might do something like this. You run as many test cases as you can in parallel, as flat as possible, so you have the fastest possible execution time and can take advantage of the cloud scale. Uh, and then if you have stuff you know, where, where one test is passing a, a piece of data into a second test, you might run those sequentially. Or maybe you have uh, an application that can only have 50 concurrent users, otherwise it kind of starts to slow down and uh, you know it could go down. If you have 500 tests, you might need to run those in groups to kind of spread out the load, things of that nature. So I'll go ahead and hit submit here. And this is our new orchestration. It hasn't been run yet, so I don't have any execution details. To execute the orchestration, I would simply hit run orchestration. And <clears throat> here I can kind of edit my orchestration. I can grab API calls. There will be more API calls after I execute it. But this is how you would uh, kind of integrate with Jenkins or, or another uh, CI CD provider. Now, let's take a look at an orchestration that has executed. And I'll quickly share the other API calls before I get into this. So here you can see the one that we had before. You can see a status and then a status by run ID and detail by run ID. <clears throat> um, you can change the grouping. You can clone orchestrations. You can make changes, uh, which is exactly the same as kind of what we just looked at. It takes you back into this and you can come in and kind of, you know, make adjustments that you need. And <clears throat> after the orchestration runs, you can come into the orchestration results. And what you'll see here is uh, you'll have the total number of test cases, executions, what passed, what failed. And scrolling down, you'll see, uh, you know, just kind of like a, an outline of exactly what happened. So this indicates three passes, one fail. And here you can see that there are four total tests. Indeed, three have passed, one have failed. If you have a lot, you might want to filter by failed. And then you're just going to come in to look at the details of a, uh, a given test result to see exactly what occurred on that particular execution. So here we'll just wait for it to load. And this is going to be exactly like any other test results uh, within Functionize. Uh, so you can simply click View, uh, come in and view the test results, see exactly what failed. Uh, so here, you know, we're looking for Google search and I've kind of designed this to fail. Uh, just as, as an example. And that's it. So I hope this was helpful. And just kind of in conclusion, what we looked at is, you know, how to set up an orchestration, some of the settings within those orchestrations, making adjustments to an orchestration that's set up, uh, facilitating potential integrations on that orchestration. And I hope that this was a valuable video for you. Thank you so much for watching.